what's up everybody welcome back to the channel uh, i got a different type of video today and i admit this project is not necessarily going to be anything cool uh, most of you guys are gonna think this is kind of weird thing to normally have on this channel um, overall pretty boring it's just a solid tone green going on this and then there's a white bed at the end as well but I actually am posting this video to show you some different things, different techniques that are used in this that I haven't really used in other videos, so I thought this might be a good opportunity to try to highlight those. Um, just blew off all of this, and after blasting, you can see all of these holes. Um, there's holes all over this thing. Now, to be fair, this is a garden swing. It sits outside, you know, 365 days a year. Um, despite the fact that it has a ton of holes in it, it's actually still incredibly solid. Um, I don't think we would normally powder coat something like this just because it seemed like it'd be kind of a waste, but this thing is still very solid. Um, you know, like I said, it's a swing. It's a freestanding swing chair bench, I think it's called. Um, but we sat in it, everything was fine. So we blasted it, despite the fact that it exposed a bunch of holes. Most of them are actually kind of hidden once it's set up and being used. Um, so we decided to go ahead with the project. So obviously the first thing we're gonna do is throw some primer on it. Um, this is once again, just some Cardinal primer. You'll actually see, you can tell by the way that this thing was made, it has all these like reinforcement pieces underneath, like right there. Um, you'll see as I do the primer and actually even as I do the color coat, uh, I'm paying special attention to make sure I get powdered down into those areas. Basically what we're trying to do is prevent any more rust from forming on this thing. Um, see if we can give it, you know, another couple decades of use. Uh, like I said, it's still incredibly sturdy, so I don't see why that would be an issue. Um, the way that this was racked was actually incredibly hard to spray a bunch of the places on this, um, especially on the top. Uh, we hung it upside down uh, thinking it might be easier to spray this way, and actually I think it ended up making it more difficult. Um, as you can see here, once again, just trying to cram primer into all those weird edges. Um, also using the primer to kind of fill some of the pitting and stuff that's in this metal. Uh, incredibly thick metal, uh, probably part of the reason that this thing is so sturdy despite having all these holes in it. I mean, you can see parts of this, I mean, it literally looks like Swiss cheese out of a cartoon or something. There's holes everywhere, but none of it's actually in the framing. It's all just in like the aesthetic part that most of this wraps around the framing. I had to be extra careful while spraying this just to not drag my hose along it. Uh, like I said, kind of the way this was hung was not ideal, uh, which left me in this position where I'm actually basically laying on my back spraying up. Uh, makes it even more difficult trying to hold a phone and do this. That's so why I have the light on on my phone trying to help me see a little bit better down here. Obviously looking up through some mesh and into the lights is not ideal, but still managed to make it work. Alright, now to Kieran, moving on to the color coat, which is City Green from Prismatic. Uh, this is just a solid tone, kind of plain green. Um, I kind of wish that I had documented the other parts that we had done. We did, did a bunch of, um, I don't know if they were fence pieces so much, uh, but they were definitely like these big ornate pieces that you would see in a garden. Um, but they kind of ran through the shop pretty quick, and I didn't end up documenting any of, any of that because I was busy doing a bunch of other stuff. But we sprayed this city green for, I don't know, I want to say two full days doing all the parts and pieces for this particular garden. So I wish I was able to see it um, all put together. I and mean, this seems like a pretty elaborate setup the way that they had it done and the amount of money that they were spending to get all this stuff done. I'm guessing it's a pretty gorgeous garden. I didn't really show the priming of this particular part. This is actually like the the frame that sits on the ground and then the bench seat that you guys saw actually kind of sits in this, is kind of cradled in this. Um, that's what allows it to swing basically. So figure this part doesn't move, but the part that you sit in does move. Um, probably not the best explanation, but it's the best I can do while I'm making this video. <laughs> Oh, and before anybody uh, jumps my case about this, this video is sped up. Uh, it's going at about one and a half times the speed. Um, still, of course, doing the wrist flick thing that a bunch of you dislike. Um, it felt like it was 
helping me get better coverage in a bunch of these corners and then even on the flat parts like we see here, I end up doing it, uh, I think just kind of keeping the pace with it. This right here is kind of an example of what I was talking about with how it was hung and how difficult it is to spray. Um, this is up about eye level with me, so I'm having to lift my arm up and over this bar without dragging the hose on it um, and then trying to spray it across to the other side and actually get good coverage. And you can't actually tell, but there's a beam that runs across the top. I guess you can sort of see what's there. The sheet metal wraps around that beam and I have to get powder up inside that and it was not fun at all. Luckily, you know, the Game Optiflex Pro is a champ pretty much always and stuff like this. Um, you know, once I dial in the settings on each product that I'm shooting, I guess, or each job that I'm shooting, um, pretty much no complaints from this thing ever. Once again, cramming powder behind this bracket just to make sure that no chance there's any bare spots. We want to really stack the powder in there. Um, once again, just to prevent rust in the future. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I know this is not the most uh, fun or entertaining video and definitely not the coolest product that's ever been seen on this channel. Uh, I got a bunch more videos coming up. I was going to try to cram a bunch into the end of the year for 2022 and I realized that I wanted to put a little more time into some of the editing and doing other things with the videos uh, just to make them more entertaining for you. I'm probably going to keep doing this kind of voiceover style. It seems to be the easiest for me to edit. Um, it also allows me to listen to music and stuff while I work as opposed to trying to talk to you guys. Um, you know, the downside is if I did listen to music while I work, um, I'll get copyright infringement notifications on this and, you know, can't monetize videos. Um, also, I listen to music incredibly loud, so that would be kind of overpowering all my explanations and stuff in here. Once again, um, I don't think I'm laying on my back this time. I think I'm actually just like knelt down on one knee. Uh, I remember my back hurt the next day or next morning looking up and spraying this. Uh, I don't think I show it in this video, but I actually coat this, you know, with the primer coat. And then I coat two coats of green on it just to make sure that we have really good coverage. And once again, still trying to hide some of that pity and stuff in the sheet metal. Um, just me checking coverage to make sure everything looks good. No weird spots, no dry spots. No bare spots, which is the other thing. Um, there's a couple areas of this that were really hard to spray, but this is uh, right before it goes in the oven, and then uh, comes out looking like this. And obviously, as you can see, glossy now, much better looking. Um, we hit a lot of the pitting. It's you know some pitting still there. Like I said, this is a very old piece of furniture. Can't expect to have it absolutely perfect. Um, and uh, you know the the client knew that, but. It looks a lot better than it did, and this is it uh, done and sitting on the ground like it's ready to be used. As you can see, all the pitting was hidden, so. So this bed came in uh, pretty rough. Um, we ended up blasting it with a media that was pretty aggressive. Uh, once again, it's on steel. Um, I don't know what the headboard and footboard of this bed were made out of, but it had a weird... Uh, I want to say solder, but the, it's not even solder. It wasn't brazing. I guess it reminded me of brazing. That's how it was held together, but it was copper. Um, I had some concerns that spraying white over top of it. I don't know if anybody's ever sprayed white over actual copper, but occasionally in the oven, that copper can actually bleed something out of it that affects the color of white. So it ends up making it kind of like a dingy yellow orange in that area. Um, we two coated this just to try to hide you know, some of the blasting, some of the imperfections in the bed, and also to make sure that we covered up that copper really well. Okay. 
I guess this is a great opportunity to remind you guys of UKC Army page on Facebook. Um, I think I reminded you guys the last couple of videos and a ton of new members have been joining. Um, you know, it's nice to see that community continue to grow. Uh, lots of posts and information being shared daily in there. So if you're on Facebook, just search out UKC Army and uh, join up. We're spraying this in uh, Cardinal's WH-11, which is kind of their run-of-the-mill gloss white. Um, I do like this white. It's very consistent color, never has anything in it, like some of the whites I've gotten from uh, some of the other big box companies. Um, the one downside that I would say that this color has is that occasionally it seems like it's almost transparent. Um, anytime that I've sprayed it over something that had some discoloration on the base metal uh, that didn't go away in blasting. Uh, I have to make sure that I two coat everything or you will definitely see it. So although it is a great, you know, bright, glossy white, um, just be weary. Be careful if you're going to be spraying it over anything, uh, especially if you have multiple different types of metals. Obviously, when you blast them, the color will end up different. Um, and this will show that the colors are different, so you might have to two coat those or prime them all so they all have the same match uh, or same matching color before you start throwing the white powder down. You can see this technique where I'm rolling back and forth uh, right where this meet. There's, there's kind of a weird gap where these meet. Like I said, this is also where that copper is, uh, the kind of brazing look of copper. Um, I was rolling back and forth trying to make sure I got powder down into those grooves. Um, this color, when you know, kind of when you spray it, it doesn't, it looks like it gives good coverage, like I said, but then it ends up being, because it's a little bit transparent, if you're thin at all, it'll be a very obvious dingy gray look anywhere that you're even a little bit thin. If you've uh, made it this far in the video, you must actually really like powder coating, because like I said, I know this was not an entertaining or even highly educational video, honestly. Um, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like powder coating content, uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, and uh, we'll be posting a ton of videos. Um, trying to do one every other day. I know that's kind of a crazy goal, but I'm going to go for it in 2023. Thanks, guys.